Hey everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. I am really excited to be sharing today's project because I have three different techniques to share with you all using acetate. I love incorporating clear elements into my card projects and I thought it would be fun to utilize Simon Says Stamps new lightweight acetate, which is different than their premium acetate. And I'll talk a little bit about that as I go along. But this acetate is really great for adding some really cool features to your card projects. Now, before I get into today's video, I do want to mention that today I am participating in the Simon Says Stamp Be Creative release blog hop. It's a blog hop celebrating their brand new collection of which I'm using today. And there's lots of inspiration along the hop that you'll be able to enjoy and get a lot of great ideas for how to use the products in this release. All right, so I'm gonna start first with taking a full size sheet of the eight and a half by 11 lightweight acetate and I'm going to start alcohol inking on top of it. Yes, you can alcohol ink on top of acetate. If you haven't tried it, it's a really cool effect. What I like about it is that you could use this as a window. You can also use this as just a background, which is what I'm going to end up doing because it gives a really nice glossy finish to your alcohol inks, a little different than if you were to use Yupo paper. So I put a rainbow of different alcohol inks onto my acetate and then I brought in some gold alloy and I'm gonna add just a little bit of spots of gold here and there around the background. And I'm blowing everything around with the Tim Holtz tool that allows you to blow the alcohol inks. Once this background is complete, I will cut this down so it's a tad smaller than five by seven. Now, because this is clear, I do want a white background behind it. And like I said, I could have just done this on Yupo paper, but I really wanted that glossy finish of the acetate. So that's why I did this. And I just put a few clear dots of glossy accents around my background just to tack it down to a sheet of white cardstock. Look how vibrant that is. On the back side of this piece, I'm going to cover the edges with some terrific tape from Simon Says Stamp. This is the one quarter inch and this is going to turn into a shaker panel. I'm going to do an edge to edge shaker. So that means I take a piece of plastic. I use stamp packaging. I reuse that so that way I don't have to throw it out in the trash, which is nice. And I just cut it down to be a little bit bigger than my panel. And so what I did was I exposed the adhesive on three sides of the paper and folded the acetate into the adhesive. So now I'm forming a pocket that my paper is sandwiched into. Now there's still an opening because we haven't folded that last edge over and that's where we're going to dump in our sequins. So I put in this really nice colorful mix of sequins and I'll close up that final edge to sandwich those sequins in place. So now my alcohol ink covered acetate is a shaker panel and it looks so beautiful. Check out those sequins floating around in there. I die cut this balloon bunch die from Simon to Stamp. It's actually an older die, but really pairs well with the birthday stamp set that's new from the Be Creative release that I'll be using today. I die cut it from some white glitter cardstock, and then I use glossy accents to put a few dots of glue here and there around the balloons to hold everything in place. I chose the glossy accents because if it squishes out the edges, you won't see the adhesive. So I'll press that down really, really well, and then we'll move on to our sentiment. This is from the new Big Old Birthday stamp set from CZ Design and Simon Says Stamp. I chose this birthday wishes greeting. It's nice and large, and I'm going to stamp this greeting onto my acetate. That's the other cool thing about this lightweight acetate is just like the premium acetate, you can heat emboss this. And so I'll put some gold embossing powder on top of my stamping. Now, the one thing to note with the lightweight acetate is you have to be a little bit more careful with how you emboss it. Just like you do vellum, you want to make sure your heat gun is really good and hot before you start embossing this because otherwise, if you put too much heat on this, you could warp it. So you just want to be careful and watch how hot you get the acetate. If you're doing something a little bit more heavy with embossing, like maybe say doing an entire background, you might want to switch to the premium acetate, which is thicker. One thing that the premium acetate can't do is be die cut because it is so thick. That's what makes it so nice for embossing, but for die cutting, you can use the lightweight acetate and now I have this really cute sentiment cut out. I'm using little foam squares that I've trimmed down. These are Simon Says Stamp foam squares and I just cut them in half. So that way they'll fit behind the letters and then you won't see the adhesive. I know a lot of people ask, how do you adhere something that's clear onto your project? I just try to find as many ways to hide that adhesive as possible. 
So my sentiments attached and now all that's needed to be done is stick it onto a card base. So I made a five by seven card base and I'm going to stick this right down into the center. And by the way, Simon Says Stamp has brand new five by seven envelopes. I'm going to be using the teal color, which is Audrey Blue to mail this card. So if you make five by seven cards and you want some envelopes, Simon Says Stamp has a nice assortment of new colors and white to choose from. So that was card number one. And so far you've seen two ways to utilize acetate on your card project. One was using alcohol inks and the other is to heat emboss and die cut. So now let's move on to another idea. So here I have the birthday balloons background stamp new from the Be Creative release. And I'm going to stick this into my Misty with the new stamp and stencil mat. I love this stamp and stencil mat for not just stamping, but you can also use it for stenciling too. I was part of the Simon Says Stamp Be Creative live stream on Thursday. I'll have a link to it in the top right corner of the screen. You can go check it out. I demoed all of the new tools that are part of this release, including this mat. So I'm going to ink up this stamp with some ink. I've chosen positively saturated inks from Simon's stamp in a nice rainbow of colors. And so I'm going to carefully ink up different sections of the stamp with those colors to create a rainbow. It's really cool, creates a nice dramatic effect. The really nice thing about this stamp and stencil mat is that nothing's moving. My paper is staying in the exact same place every single time. And I can then go back over and over and over this with, like I said, the other colors, but I'm also going to finally at the very end, stamp this with embossing ink. And the reason I've chosen to do this is because I want to put clear embossing powder on top to trap those colors because I'm also going to add some ink blending on top of this. So we're going to do basically a tone on tone effect and I don't want the stamping to get disturbed or dulled by the colors that I'm going to add on top. So after I've heat set that clear embossing ink, I'm going to come back in with those same colors and ink blend over top of my stamping. And so the embossing powder is resisting all the color that I'm putting on top. And at the very end, I'll just be able to buff off any extra ink that might be sitting on top of my embossing. I really loved these colors. It's nice and juicy and has such a bright and happy feel. Perfect for birthdays. If you'll notice all of the cards that I made today were all rainbow themed. So definitely into the color right now. I spritzed this with a little bit of water because Simon Says Stamps positively saturated inks are water reactive. And then I die cut this with a tag die. So now I have a cute little tag and I'm going to add a sentiment from the big old birthday stamp set. I'm going to put this right in the center, but before I do that, I want to turn this tag into an edge to edge shaker, just like I did for the card that we made already. And it's really easy to do, even though it's a funny shape, all you have to do is trim the plastic to the same general shape as the tag itself, follow those same edges. And then you'll be able to just fold that plastic over and it molds very easily to the shape of the tag. So I just covered all the edges with terrific tape. I'll remove all the release paper from every edge except for one so that way I can still fill this. And then I'll just carefully lay my plastic over the edges of the tag and it will easily fold into place. You'll have some areas where you might want to trim the corners like I did here, have a little excess plastic kind of hanging up and then that way it'll be a lot smoother. So we'll fold these all over to form the pocket that we'll be able to turn into our edge to edge shaker. I'm going to fill this with some really nice bright rainbow sequins that I had in my stash and I even pulled out some clear sparkly ones to add a little bit of interest. Once this is filled, I can then take that final edge and lay it into the adhesive. And now all of our sequins are trapped in place and we have a really bright and fun shaker tag. So back to the sentiment, I'm going to stamp this onto some acetate, but this time instead of doing heat embossing, I'm actually going to use stays on ink because you can use solvent inks on top of acetate and create a really nice bright white or black finish. There's different colors of stays on inks to choose from. Now the white often needs refilled. So it does come with a reinker and I'm just going to quickly press all that ink into the foam pad to make sure that it's good and saturated. Then I can ink up my stamp and stamp this directly down onto my acetate. This doesn't take very long to dry. I would say in about like five minutes, it was ready to be die cut. And like I said earlier, this 
acetate is able to be die cut. So I use the coordinating dies to cut it out. And then like I did for the other sentiment, I'm going to just put some very small pieces of foam tape behind my greeting so I can pop it up onto my tag. You could of course use liquid glue if you want, but I did like the shadow that it created by using the foam tape. Now, because this is a tag, we need to add a ribbon and we also need to make sure that the hole in our acetate is cleared. So I'm going to go ahead and use a hole punch to trim out that acetate so I can thread some ribbon through the top and that'll form my tag. It looks super cute. I did trim the edges of the ribbon a little bit so that way they weren't so long. And this would look adorable on a gift for somebody's birthday. I had so much fun with this tag that I wanted to make a card that went with it. So I'm going to do something really fun here, which is emboss with a 3D embossing folder. Now, when you run this through, you'll run it through just like you do any other embossing folder in your machine. It will curl the acetate. It's because it's thin, but this can still be used. We're going to sandwich it inside of a frame. So that way it'll stretch it out and we'll be able to keep it nice and flat on our card. So I'm taking two rectangle dies from Simon's stamp and I'm going to tape them together to form a frame and I'll die cut this from some white cardstock. Then I will put some red line tape around the edges. I wanted something super strong for this because I am adhering it onto an embossed design. So there's a little less flat surface for a regular tape to adhere to. So that's why I chose something with a little bit more power. So I'm using 1 8 inch red line tape to put that around all four sides of my frame. And then I can lay this down on top of my embossed acetate. So I'll flatten this out as best I can and then start laying the frame on top of it. This will still curl a little bit, but once we adhere it down onto our card, we will have no curling at all. I need to trim down the edges of the acetate so it's not hanging out the sides. And then finally to adhere this onto my background, I'm going to use some foam tape. You don't have to use foam tape, but I wanted a little bit of depth from this frame to the background. Let's talk about that background. So I'm making my background with that same balloon stamp. We're making a very similar card to what we did earlier, but instead of stamping with color, I'm going to stamp just with the embossing ink and then white emboss my balloons. So I use Simon's Stamp White Embossing Powder for this and I'll heat set it with my heat tool. Of course you can't see it cause it's white on white, but we'll fix that. We'll start ink blending some really nice colors that we used from the same tag that we made earlier. And I'm just changing up how the colors are going on. I'm doing them at a diagonal this time so it's something a little bit different, but it still matches well with the tag. And because we did the embossing like earlier, the embossing is going to resist all that ink and we can just buff off any excess that might be sitting on top of the embossing. So our background is nice and clean. We just need to trim this down so it's the same size as the outermost areas of our frame. So I trimmed it down and now I'll lay my frame with the acetate straight down onto that background. And now it's completely flat. We have no warping at all. And we have this really cool embossed detail. Almost makes the background look like it's sparkling. It's really fun. Now I'm going to stamp a sentiment onto some black cardstock. This is from that same big old birthday set. And I used white embossing powder. I thought this would pop off really well off of all this color. I picked out some of this pattern paper from Waffle Flower. It's the JJ Bolton Rainbows. And this is going to just go right behind my background panel for a little pop of color. So I heard everything together, including a little supporting sentiment to go with birthday love. And I finally finished things off with a few gems from Honeybee Stamps. These are really pretty sparkly colors. It's a nice soft rainbow palette. I'm using Simon's Stamp reverse tweezers to attach those down. And there you have it. Card number three is complete. So let's see, we talked about heat embossing on acetate, embossing with an embossing folder. We've also done alcohol inks, and even if you think about it, uh, putting stays on ink on acetate is technically another technique. So I hope you were inspired by all these ideas that I've shared today. Hopefully you'll wanna check out the uh, lightweight acetate. I think it's something you're gonna wanna have in your stash because it's different than the premium acetate, which I'll link to in the video description along with all the other products that I'm using today so you can find everything real easy. But it's different, and yet at the same time you need both. Cause the neat thing is that Lightweight acetate can do things that the premium acetate can't do and premium acetate can do things that the lightweight can't do. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I can't wait to come back and share more with you all. But until I see you again, have a fabulous day and thanks for watching.